Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Unit 1, Skill 6. This is Miss Griffin, as you can see, or here. Um, our goal for you guys to, for today is to be able to construct a 30 and 45 degree angle. So we're going to start with 30 degree angles, and then on the back side we'll take a look at 45 degree angles. Example 1 says 30 degree angle. How many degrees are in each angle of an equilateral triangle? So remember, an equilateral triangle, we've talked about it before, we've actually constructed it twice now. Um, equilateral triangles have three congruent sides, three congruent angles, where each angle is 60 degrees. And if you're wondering how I got the 60 degrees, remember all angles in a triangle sum to 180. There are three congruent ones, so divide it by three, and that gives us the magic number of 60. It's not really magic, though, don't worry. So the next part says, by doing what two constructions can we create a 30 degree angle? So if you think about it for a second, we have 30 coming from potentially 60. So we know that we can get a 60 degree angle by creating an equilateral triangle. So that's the first construction we'll have to do. And that's going to give us the 60 degree angle. From there, we know that we can go from 60 to 30 by, hopefully you're recognizing, cutting it in half. So if we have an angle that needs to be cut in half, that means that we need to do the angle bisector construction. And that's going to cut 60 degree angle in half. To give us a 30 degree angle. You'll notice that I just used a little double arrow symbol. That means the then. T-H-E-N. So we cut 60 degree angle in half, then we get a 30 degree angle. So we're going to do one together, then you are going to try one on your own shortly after that. It says construct an equilateral triangle and create a 30 degree angle at vertex A. It's important that we recognize we do have to do this at vertex A because if you do it at B, you lose credit. So starting with the equilateral triangle, this is your basic um, equilateral triangle where we start with the center on A, radius opened up to B. You guys should be pretty comfortable with this. It's one of the easiest constructions ever. Okay, center on A, radius on B, swing it slightly above and way down below. Then we're going to switch. Remember, because it's equilateral, we don't want to change the radius. Keeping the radius the same gives us equal lengths. Where they intersect, let's just call that point C. Then remember, we don't like curvy triangles like this. We want to use our straight edge on the compass to make a nice, beautiful, complete equilateral triangle. I'm going to take just a second to outline that. You guys know I love to outline whatever it is that I just constructed. So if this were worth a uh, four points on an exam, we would have gotten two out of four so far. We're halfway there. And now our next step is to create a 30 degree angle. So right now what we know is that each of these angles, angle A, angle B, and angle C, are all 60 degrees. And in, in fact, I'm going to label angle B as 60. You could also label angle C. I don't want to quite label it angle A yet because we're going to cut it in half. Remember, that's the point here. We're cutting 60 in half to create 30. So I'm going to change my color. If you have a different color on you, that might be helpful so you can see which construction came from which color. I'm going to start by putting my uh, center on A. Remember, now we're doing the angle bisector construction. So this is three total arcs, starting with a smiley arc across both sides of the angle. Center on A, open up my radius to some measure. Doesn't matter how big or how small, as long as you can cross both sides of the angle. So now from these two intersection points, we just swing those baby arcs. Remember, keep your radius the same. It's the easiest way to do this construction. Swing a baby arc, pick it up, put it on the other intersection point, and swing that same baby arc. So they cross up here. You don't have to label these intersection points with letters. Um, 
unless they tell you to. So now our last and final step is to connect A through that point of intersection with the baby arcs. So I just connected A through here, extended with an arrow. So then, uh, like I said, I like to highlight whatever I've just done. So I'm going to use a different color to highlight my angle bisector. And what we just created were 30 degree angles at vertex A. I'm actually going to put two arc marks on here. Notice at 60 degrees I had one arc mark. At 30 degrees I had two because 60 is very different from 30 degrees, but the third... 30 degree angles are the same as one another, so they can both get two arc marks. So what you're going to do now is try this on your own. I'm going to walk through it on the video. You um, can certainly fast forward it once you are done with your own. However, I'm going to walk through it silently um, so that if you get stuck, you can just look up and see what I'm doing. Just because the A and the B, I'm sorry, I'm not being silent just yet. Just because the, the segment AB is vertical this time instead of horizontal does not make any difference at all in this construction. You do it the same exact way, starting center on A, radius on B. If you need more time, just pause the video. If you've already done it, just uh, obviously stick with me. We're going to flip it over to the back side. But my final answer for the u try section looks like this. Remember that your 30 degree angle did, did still need to be created at vertex A. So you can see that the green angle bisector is shooting out of vertex A. On the back side, we're going to take a look at creating a 45 degree angle. So using your knowledge of the 30 degree angle problem that we just did, think about how you could create a 45 degree angle using two different constructions. So we thought before about how 30 was half of 60, so maybe we should think about what 45 is half of. If you need to do a little math on the top of your paper, 45 plus 45, 0, 1, 90. Okay, so somehow we have to create a 90 degree angle. And we know that 90 degree angles come from perpendicular lines. Therefore, we're going to do a perpendicular bisector. And in parentheses, I'm just going to write 90 degree angle. Because that's what it's going to give us after all. Once we have a 90 degree angle, we need to go from 90 to 45 degrees. And just as we did on the last one, we're going to use that angle bisector construction again. It will cut 90 degree angle in half. Then we have 45 degree angle. All right, so we're just going to do this once together. It's very similar to what we just did on the back side, but in, or on the front side rather. Instead of creating a triangle first, we just have to do our perpendicular bisector. Remember, that's the one that has those fishy-looking arcs. You swing way above, swing way below, switch, and do it again. I'm going to start on A. 
remember there's an important aspect here about your radius. Think about that real quick. Where should your radius go? Less than half, equal to half, more than half. Hopefully your brain is screaming more than half. So I'm going to swing way above, way below. Switch. Think about whether or not you keep your radius the same. The answer should be yes, keep it the same. And then connect through. I know I'm going a little fast through this construction because you guys are so familiar with perpendicular bisector by now. Hopefully it's one of your favorites. It's one of my favorites. It's so easy. Okay, so we have a 90 degree angle here right now, and I'm just going to mark that on the left hand side with my little box. I could mark it in any one of these four little quadrants here, um, but we're not going to mark it in all of them just because it would get so messy. So we've got this midpoint here. I'm going to label it as M. You don't have to label it in the future going through this construction, but just for the sake of this video, it's going to help me to be able to talk to you about it. So what we're going to do right now is create a 45 degree angle. I'm going to have mine shoot off in this direction, my angle bisector. You could do it in any direction since the question did not specify. If it did specify, then you'd have to um, do it in a particular direction. So again, changing my color because I'm doing a second construction on this one particular picture. Center on M. I'm going to close up my radius a little bit so that I'm going to cross over segment AB. And I'm going to start by swinging that smiley arc. You need to cross your perpendicular bisector and segment AB so that we get those two points from which we'll make those baby arcs. Do it from one point, now do it from the other, keeping the radius the same this entire construction. There's my point of intersection, and my last and final step is to connect through from M through the baby arcs. So what we just created was a 45 degree angle here and 45 degree angle here. I'm going to put one arc mark on each to indicate that they are congruent or the same or equal to one another. And again, I'm just going to outline my angle bisector in a different color. All right, there we go, 35, or 30 degree angles and 45 degree angles using a known construction and an angle bisector. See ya!